speaking of this verse, the first to interpret the Quran said, Ishak, no soul can die but by Allah's permission in a term that is written. While predestination is incompatible with all rational thought, I can only wonder why a spirit would write the details of everyday life on a tablet and then provide his Quran orally. But that wasn't the point of the message. Muhammad wanted Muslims to know that Allah was going to kill them, whether they fought or not, so they might as well fight for babes and booty. Quran 3, verse 146. How many of the prophets fought in Allah's cause? With them fought myriads of godly men who were slain. They never lost heart if they met with disaster in Allah's way, nor did they weaken nor give in. Allah loves those who are firm and steadfast. Warriors. It's the doctrine of jihad, but Allah only loves Muslims who die fighting. Fighting alone isn't good enough. You have to die. Ishak. Allah loves the steadfast. Fighters. How many a prophet has death in battle befallen, and how many multitudes with him? They did not show weakness toward their enemies, and were not humiliated when they suffered in the fight for Allah and their religion. That is steadfastness, and Allah loves the steadfast. Ishak's interpretation of the Quran is identical to my own. Islam and fighting are inseparable. Ishak Practice your religion as they did, and be not renegades turning back on your heels, retreating. Those who retreat and turn away from the battle are losers in this world and in the next. According to history's foremost expert on Islam, the best way to practice the religion is to fight to the death. Further, the only Islamic term more vile than hypocrite, which stands for peaceful Muslim, is renegade, which stands for retreating Muslim in this context, and one who abandons Islam in others. Being a renegade is unforgivable. It's a death sentence. Muhammad may have lost the skirmish with the merchants, but rest assured, his Allah was still the best terrorist. Quran 3, verse 150 Nay, Allah is your patron, and he is the best of helpers. Soon we shall strike terror into the hearts of the infidels, for that they joined companions with Allah, for which he had sent no authority, their abode will be in the fire, and evil is the home of the wrongdoers. The next time you hear Muslims say that Islam is a peace-loving and tolerant religion, you will know that one of two things must be true. Either they are bad Muslims, unwilling to fight, or they are good Muslims, eager to fight, but willing to deceive on Muhammad's orders to facilitate the battle. Interpreting this passage, Ishak claims Muhammad equates battlefield advances with the religion of Islam. Muslims, if you listen to the unbelievers, you will retreat from the enemy and become losers. Ask Allah for victory and do not retreat, withdrawing from his religion. We will terrorize those who disbelieve. In that way, I will help you against them. Allah was a terrorist, and Islam exists to fight. This next verse is chilling. Quran 3, 152 Allah did indeed fulfill His promise to you when you, with His permission, were about to annihilate your enemy until you flinched and fell to disputing about the order and dis and disobeyed it after he brought you in sight of the booty which you covet. Among you are some that hanker after this world, and some that desire the hereafter. This is the essence of Islam, the motivation for terror. Ishak agrees. I promised to give you victory over your enemy. You routed them with the sword, killing them by my permission. Then you deserted me and disobeyed my order, and disputed about the order of my prophet. He told the archers to stay put, but after I showed you what you were desiring, the Meccan wives and property, you desired the spoil and abandoned the order to fight. These words are as biting as their swords. Only those who fought for religion did not transgress in going after the booty. Allah reproached the hypocrites for running away from their prophet and paying no heed when he called to them. According to Islam, 
If you are a religious fighter, it's okay to kill unbelievers, possess their wives, and steal their property. And keep in mind why the Muslims were confronted at Uhud. They had terrorized Quraysh caravans. They had gone out as pirates in pursuit of booty. They had looted, murdered, kidnapped, ransomed, and gloated. The Meccans simply wanted to stop the terror. That's why they went home after having thought that they had eliminated the nuisance. Unlike Muslims, the Meccans collected no spoils and took no prisoners. Yet we're told that the militants were fighting in Allah's cause and that the pirates are the ones who will be rewarded. Back on the battlefield with the Muslims in full retreat, Muhammad cried, Come back to me, don't run away, for I am the messenger of God. Quran 3, verse 153. Behold, you ran off, climbing up the high hill without even casting a side glance at anyone, while the messenger in your rear is calling down from your rear, urging you to fight. Now that's quite a picture. Allah gave you one distress after another by way of requital, to teach you not to grieve for the booty that had escaped you, and for the ill that had befallen you. Only mercenaries would grieve over lost booty. There is an interesting line in the next verse that underscores the problem of predestination. Quran 3, 154 Say, even if you had remained in your houses, those ordained to be slaughtered would have gone forth to the places where they were to be slain. Men are condemned to die and to go to hell without choice. Even if a Muslim wants to be peaceful, Allah will drag him to his death. So why bother with a religion, a prophet, or acts of terror? It's all meaningless.